All right, I'm going to set a timer here. I'm going to do like a 30 minute deal. We've got a tournament that we don't have access to the holes in Ricky, so we can go up. They've put all of the holes in T7. And I have videos in my playlist. And we talk about the win ring method. And like, I know that there may be some newer viewers that are out there, or just a recap for some of the old ones. But since we don't have these holes available to us in Ricky, and we're not going to be able to truly get a look at them until the first day of the tournament. So Monday being a big practice day. Um, make sure when you go into the tournament that you have all of the everything you need. So like doing your notes. I did a playthrough for the upcoming tournament. If I sort my playthrough. If I sort my playthrough alphabetically, the very first one that pops up is AAA Golf Clash Tips and Strategies. And there's actually the oldest video I ever made is in here. It's, I, it's one of these ones up at the top. And it'll talk about just making basic wind adjustments and how to get your numbers. But just kind of, you can go through that playlist and look through there to, if you don't know how to use the wind ring method, that's the, that's step number one is let's at least get the ball rolling. So if you know how to use the wind ring method, this is the, a great opportunity since we don't have these holes to practice to make sure that when we go into the tournament on Monday, you have a scope sheet and you've got a, you know, you've got a note sheet that's got all the holes on it and what clubs you're bringing and you have numbers for all those clubs written down. So you can save yourself a little bit of <clears throat> time when the tournament starts. And right now is a great time to work on those numbers. You can get your numbers. <clears throat> There's a lot of different ways that you can get your numbers. You can go to Golf Clash Notebook, Golf Clash Notebook IO. And it's this is the resource for all of the holes. And I mean, you can get your info here. You can use, so when you're looking for wind ring numbers, there's, you can do this one of two ways, paper or an app. And if you want to purchase an app, the only two that I know about out there is there's Golf Clash Caddy and there's the <clears throat> Golf Clash Notebook app. And so Golf Clash Caddy, I think is the one that Tommy uses and Golf Clash Notebook is Zachary Jones. And so you have two choices as far as apps, or you can do it by paper. And I do it by paper. I do use a grid and I use a secondary grid. Golf Clash Notebook has a built-in grid system. So if you're using Golf Clash Notebook, you can use the grid that's in there. But I, I wanted more specialty on my grid. So I use a separate program called Material Q. And that's C-U-E, Material Q. That way you can customize. I can put, you can make it however you want. I tried a bunch of different stuff, but... Some of the grid was too much stuff on the page and I changed the color so it blends in more. I, I, it's not noticeable unless I need it. <clears throat> and so I do the paper method and I am using a, a secondary grid, a secondary app, not using the stuff that's in the apps. And I, I don't have a problem with the apps. And I know I've got friends, Hammer and Hank, Dale Appleby, they use... They use Golf Class Notebook app. Lots of people use the Golf Class Notebook app. Lots of people use the Golf Class Caddy app. So there's lots of people that use these apps to help you do the math. I do the old-fashioned paper way. Partially, I teach you this because if you want to use these ones, you need to have a base understanding of what the heck's going on. And so by doing it with paper, if you haven't used anything at all and you're trying to get a method to start off with, the paper method's not, I mean, it doesn't cost you anything except for a little bit of time. And it also makes your brain work. Most of the people that play golf class are, this isn't, there's not a lot of kids that play it. So most people that play it are adults and it'll, it'll help keep your uh, brain a little bit lubricated because you have to figure out the math for your clubs. So here's how the math for the clubs works. We'll take drivers as an example. So it, it does, this works for every single club, but it's real simple. You have a hundred accuracy and you have zero accuracy. And it's broken up into, you can have something that's three accuracy or 47 accuracy. It can be those, but we're breaking it up into fives. So we got five, 10, 15, 20, all the way up to a hundred in groups of five. So at three, at zero accuracy, it's three miles per hour per wind. At five, it's 2.9. At 10, it's 2.8. At 15, it's 2.7. And it goes all the way up to 100% where it's one ring one mile per hour per ring so it gets much more accurate when it gets to 100 so if you took that club and you had it and it was brand new it'd be three miles per hour per ring but when you get it to 100 accuracy it's one mile per hour per ring not every club gets to 100 so when you're choosing clubs i believe that most people choose clubs for the wrong reasons 
Like they don't think about, they, they may pick one of club in their bag for the right reasons. And then they start making, then, then they start making choices. Like when you're with your driver, do you want to, do you want a long hitting driver? Cause not the long hitting drivers, unless they're really high up and level are usually inaccurate. So you pay that. There's a consequence. You've got a driver. It's like going out in the real world. You have a driver that can hit way down there, but it's not really accurate. <laughs> and so then you have drivers that are accurate, but they can't hit it as far down there. So, you know, what are you looking for is that stuff. But like when you get down into woods and long irons and short irons, you know, what are you trying to get from your club? Are you trying to get accuracy? Or are you trying to get ball guide? For me, ball guide is like the is is a big deal that I'm looking for in clubs, and accuracy is a big deal that I'm looking for in clubs. And you want other things to to help that out. But if you have clubs that have, especially in your money clubs, like short iron to me is a money club. That's where you bring the stuff home. That club can win you. That club can win you a ton of matches. That ton, that club can win you a ton of tournaments because if you can get into your short iron range. So I want a short iron that's accurate. Got lots of ball guide. And so each one of these clubs is going to be a little bit different. And so as you move up the scale and you get clubs, what clubs you put in your bag, you're going to have to remember those numbers. So you upgraded a club and it went from 50 accuracy to 70 accuracy. So that club changes from two per ring to 1.8 per ring. So you have to remember those numbers. And this is 1.8 in max club. So the club has a, a red line distance here where when you get to that red line, it can't go any farther. You're either switching over to the next club where if you're in the wood, you're it won't go any farther. You can't go any farther than that with that wood. That's your max red line. So these numbers that we're coming up with are our max red line. If you're in your minimum red line, so there's going to be a, a distance from where you're at max to where you're at min. When you're hitting that club at min, it's going to hit, this number's going to be off because you're at minimum club. It's more accurate back here. And when you're at mid club, it's more accurate. So as you pull it closer to you, the ring sets get a little bit smaller and it gets more accurate. And some clubs, like your short iron, when you get them up in here, they it's twice as accurate. So if it's 100, if it's, Two per ring here, it's one per ring back here. They get super accurate when you get them close. So knowing the numbers for your clubs and having those numbers written down so that when you're playing, because you may get on a, it's especially important during tournament and it, it'll, it'll, it's very important all the time to have your club numbers available to you until you totally memorize them. There are some clubs I can pop in my bag and I can glance at and I won't remember them five minutes from now, but I'll remember them on that hole because all the rest of the numbers for all my other clubs that are in my bag are just burned into my memory banks. Practice. No, I, I played those clubs long enough that when I do make a change in a club and it actually changed the accuracy of my club, I have to remember a different number. There's a transition period. <laughs> until I can burn it into my memory banks that that club is now it's 1.2 instead of 1.4. And that makes a difference. It won't make that huge of a difference when you're playing one-on-one. -on -one. Because when you're playing one-on-one, -on -one, your goal is to go from fairway to fairway to green. And in many cases, your opponent will epic fail and not do that. And then you just win right on the course. And if you go to a shootout, you know, the whole goal is to try and be the closest at least 50% of the time. I get you that 75% win rate. So the whole goal is to help you win more during the off week so that you can open more chests, get more club cards. You get more club cards, you'll advance your clubs faster. And it'll help you out when you're playing in tournaments because you'll have better clubs to bring. But first thing is, is like picking out which clubs you're going to use on holes. So going and researching the holes. So on my YouTube channel, I usually set up at the very beginning of the week. And there's a whole community out there that you can go and look on holes. So maybe you don't, <clears throat> maybe you don't like the way I'm playing that hole, and you want to look and see what the options are. My whole goal is to show you as many options as possible. And some of those options I may not play, and you go, "Hey, I really like that one," and you may find somebody else is playing that one. But I want to show you all of the options that are available on Ricky because a lot of the content that's out there for Ricky is like, "Hey, just do it this way right here. It's the way," and do the deal instead of actually thinking about like maybe that shot doesn't work for you. Some of the shots that I see demoed out there um, by other people that put out rookie content, they're so close to transitional surfaces that unless you hit perfect every single time, 
gosh, that's not going to work for you because it'll work great on the times you hit perfect. But if you don't hit perfect, you're in, you're in the brown stuff. And so my goal is just to show you different ways to come at it. So like if that shot's not your cup of tea, or if you get on the hole and the wind is blowing in such a way that that shot cop, that shot is nobody's cup of tea, then you have two or three other options that you have available to you because you see it all the time when you're playing. Somebody goes out there and they know how to play that hole in a certain way. And that's the only way they play it. And the wind is not favorable for that particular shot, but they have to force the issue because they don't know any of the other shots. And so it's really important to know how to come at these holes from different every, you want to know how to come at these holes from every different angle. So when you get out there on one-on-one, -on -one, you don't have to scramble like your opponent and try and figure out how to do the thing. You already know how to, okay, the wind's not blowing right. So I'm not going to do that rough bump. The rough bump's the way to get the hole in one, but I'm not going to do the rough bump because the wind's blowing the wrong way. And I'm going to hit it from this Island pad over here. And it's going to be, I can get just as close. So knowing how, knowing the numbers on your clubs so that you can be successful in one-on-one -on -one is, is the key to success in the tournament, because the better you are in one-on-one -on -one, and the better you're playing there, the more chests you're opening, the more chests, the more cards, and the more cards, the better clubs. <clears throat> and we want to have, we want to go into the tournament with the best possible bag of clubs that we can. So you want to have, if you've got clubs at your disposal, you're trying to work those clubs to get them to be the best that they can possibly be. Now you can get your club numbers if you go to Golf Class Notebook. You can go into, let's take an extra mile. You can go into the wind chart in the extra mile and it'll show you if it's at level one, it'll give you numbers. These numbers aren't, I don't use the numbers from here. I use the old paper method where I just figure out the numbers the old fashioned way. Because like right here at level seven, this extra mile, has the same accuracy as it does when it's at level eight and when it's at level nine, but yet at level seven, it's 2.2 and at level nine, it's 2.1. And I don't know how they arrived at the math on that. So I use the old, the old, old, like the original paper way of doing it because that I, that way is easier in my mind. I know that that club is a 50% accurate club and that means it's two per ring or it's a 45. So it's 2.1. So it's a little bit, so there's different ways to keep those numbers. The numbers for your bigger clubs up here, um, you know, like I don't necessarily have the numbers written down for my minimum and my mid when I'm in my driver, because I find in most cases, there are specialty holes. There's a few par threes in this game that you come out with a driver and you may come at them with a rocket or you may come at them with a QB or you may come at them with one of your with one of your drivers some if you're playing from the back tees there may be holes that you're coming out with your apocalypse or your thor's hammer and so you may need to know what your minimum numbers are when you're on those holes because on that particular hole that number is super important but normally you're playing your driver out towards the max red line and if you're not you're doing a serious layup and you're just trying to hit in the center and it's not going to make that big of a difference but when you start getting down into your money clubs, which would be your short irons and, and your long irons, and your wedge, you may want to start writing those numbers down, especially for short iron. So if you're in your short iron, you definitely want to know what your numbers are. If you've got lower developed stuff, as soon as you get a kingfish, it's a great club to get because it's super accurate. And so you'd want to know what those numbers are. So it'll tell you, you can come in here and it'll figure out I don't know at the, what percentages they do their math. And so their percentages are off. I've been playing the old fashioned way where we play with a piece of paper and we just went off of the 50% accurate club is two per, two per ring and a 45 is 1.9 and a 40 is 1.8. I've played off of those numbers for so long that I have faith in those numbers. And so you have to have confidence in your numbers and you may find that one of these numbers doesn't quite work for you with that club. Maybe with that particular club in that range, it hits a little bit different. Maybe it's one of those clubs that's at 57 accurate. So it's past the 1.9. And are you playing it at 1.9 or 1.8? Maybe it really plays more at 1.8 than it does at 1.9. Or maybe even though it might be closer to the 1.8, it actually plays at 1.9. And so the app doesn't allow you to change those base numbers. But if you play by paper, and you're finding that you're always a little bit off of the club, you can you can work that number. And I know players who have certain clubs in their bag that they don't play them 
Like I know somebody who plays their their backbone, even though it's accuracy, they play it at a at like one over or one under. They play it a little bit different and they found that those numbers worked for that club. And so some of it's going to have to be like your playing style, like how you're playing and which clubs you're playing. But that we have time right now before the tournament where we're not getting to practice those holes. So make sure that when we go into the tournament, you have your club numbers written down and what clubs you're going to bring so that when we get in it, you're already ready to roll. Now you're just, and what it does for you out on the course when you have all that stuff is that that means that you can spend more of your shot clock time trying to set the shot up and trying to perfect it and less time having to think about, you know, what are the ring numbers you already know going in. I've already got it written down in that part of my tournament notes that on this hole, I'm using an extra mile and it hits 2.1 per ring. And then my secondary club is going to be a sniper and it hits, or it's going to be a Viper and it's level seven and it hits 1.7 per ring or whatever the accuracy is for it. That way you already know those numbers going in. And then as the week goes on and you find that, Hey, when I hit that, I hit it perfect. And I did the 1.7 with that wood, but it's coming in a little bit to the right. That tells me that either you're not in your max club or we need to make an elevation adjustment. And that, that's how, like when I play during the week and I start the week off, my number one goal is to pick balls and clubs that I'm going to take to that hole. And then I can start working the win numbers to find out like, where am I at in my club? And do I have an elevation change? And the only way you'll be able to identify that there's a problem in your game is if you actually came to the hole and had a method that was repeatable. So when you see people eyeball it, they come to a hole and they eyeball it and they hit it perfect and it doesn't go in the cup. How do you go back and change that so that you can you can make a change to the game and, okay, I'm going to add elevation, so now I'm going to eyeball the elevation. You'll never, that's not repeatable. So the people that are at the top of the scale, one of my viewers we were talking about on Mondays, people coming out and hating on people that do good in the tournament. The deal is, is that most of those people think the only way that you can get good is to use a cheat. <laughs> when you can really get really good at this game if you learn how to use the win ring method so that you're you're a student of the game you brought the right clubs you know their base win numbers and then you got on that hole and then after you got on that hole you shot some perfects you did the the rings and you were off you can go back and you can analyze why were you off were you off because you're in a different part of your club or were you off because you need to add elevation or what was the deal and you can start to tighten that up to the point where you can get the ball in the hole Whereas if you eyeball it, you're never going to be able to, you'll never going to, you'll never be able to do that. It doesn't matter if you have, if you know that there's an elevation change there or not, you'll never get it right. I mean, occasionally you'll get it right and you'll get in the hole, but the deal is, is on a repeatability scale, you'll never get that, that process right. So it's really important to have a method. And if you're not using a method, the ring method is definitely the way to go. And the, here's part of the thing. The reason the ring method is the way to go is because number one, it works. And number two, there's tons of, of content out there. So there's a lot of different ways that you can do it. Like what's, I will say what's cool about the way that I'm talking about where you use a piece of paper and do the thing is, is that if you use that method, at least you have a method and that method will teach you the foundations for how all of the rest of this stuff works. So you may use the paper numbers and go, man, I'm always off on that club, but you use the numbers in the app and you're like, okay, I like these numbers. I didn't like the numbers in the app just because I already knew numbers. And so I, I, always, I didn't have faith in them. But if you're new and you don't have anything to choose from right now, it, you might as well, you might as well uh, go out there and, uh, and pick a pony. <laughs> but that way, when we're talking about when, when you're watching the videos and you're, we're talking about, you know, using some kind of, of adjustment, you've got some kind of method to your madness. That'll help get you closer. So if you want to try and make the weekend round every week, it's super simple. You, what you do is if you're trying to make the weekend round in the tournament, let's see if we can go into the game. It's probably closed down by now. If you're trying to make the weekend round, your whole goal is to shoot the minimum score. 99 times out of a hundred in these tournaments, if the minimum score coming into the beginning of the week was minus 12, minus 24, if you shoot a minus 12 in the qualifying round and a minus 24 in the opening round, you're going to make the weekend round. I mean, that's, like 99 times out of 100, that's that's a truism. So your first goal is to just learn how to play the courses so that you're, you're fairway to fairway to green. You're playing it like one-on-one. -on -one. 
you're not concerned so much about making that eagle or making that albie. Your goal is to force a shootout by always getting the minimum score on that hole. Once you've mastered that, and you could do that with, you could achieve that goal if you didn't have the wind ring method, if you played consistent and you gave and you gave yourself. But if you were trying to dig your way up into the top 20, you're going to have to come up with a method if you want to consistently be up there. And my goal is to help you guys learn how to be consistent top 10 players so that every week, week in and week out, you're going for a banner. And the only way that you're going to get that kind of results is if you put in the effort and actually learn a method. And so the win ring method, in my opinion, is it's not just a it's the one that you have to learn. You have to pick one. You have to pick something. You got to come up with some way that we can scientifically, you know, try and figure out the win that's repeatable. Because that's what these tournaments are all about is repeatability. So if you can go back out there and you can repeat that and you can dial that shot in and you know what the adjustments are, then you can you can win in this game. But if you're not doing that, you're, you know, you may have success where you're making the weekend round because you're playing consistent. But if you're really trying to get up towards the top to get banners, you have to pick a pony. That way you can work on your clubs and you want to get your clubs and there's no rules here. I mean, if you want to be a max trophy player, then go for max trophies. But if you want to play rookie, you're going to be bracketed up like I work pretty, pretty diligently. My, my account is an expert account. I don't make any bones about it. My account is an expert account. I'm in an expert rated deal and I play in the tournament against other experts. The way that Playdemic has its fair play, fair, fair play handling is that you're playing against people that are in your division. So the only people I'm playing against are, are experts. Probably half the bracket are experts that have more games, more cash, one at higher levels have better clubs or the same kind of clubs as me. And then half the people in the bracket are ones that ran up to Rick or ran up to expert as fast as they could because they either bought into the thing that the community puts out there that you're going to be a max trophy player or you're a turd <laughs> or they're experienced players and they're trying to get their account up to T78 so that they can start working on clubs. So you're going to play against, you may play out on the course against people that have lower or higher developed clubs than you. But when you're playing in your bracket, you're playing in brackets. May, is, it's not about clubs. It's about where you're ranked, what your trophy level is. So think about that as you're moving up, especially if you're a newer player and you're starting a newer account. Don't go up too fast because it's not, it doesn't benefit you to go up fast. It puts you where you're playing against tougher people and it'll take you longer to build up your club inventory. Lots of open, open lots of chests. Get in the game on a regular basis and open up that free chest. Play your pin chest every day. You get good, good rewards in your pin chest and you can get rewards in your pin chest all the way up to the max tour that you're playing. Same thing with the free chest. So you may end up getting tour seven stuff in your pin chest or in your free chest. Even though you may not be playing Tour 7, you may have Tour 7 open. But as you go up the scale, be conscious about where your divisional ranking is. So if you go up and you want to be up here in Expert so that you get more club cards, like, you know, there's perks. If you get to Master, if you get to Master Level 1, every chest you open has 100% more club cards in it. So you get twice as many club cards when you're a Master. So when you see those people that are masters, they wanted to get the masters so that they could work on their clubs twice as fast. So every time they open a chest up, bam, they're getting twice as many clubs. So there's benefits to going up, up the scale and going up here. But there's also some downfalls. If you go up to expert to get these extra bonuses, then you're going to now start playing against experts. If you go to expert one and then you bounce around right there and you've never gone any higher, you'll probably still be playing pro. But if once you get to expert two, you're locked into expert forever. You're never going to play in the tournaments against pros, rookies. If you get yourself up to masters, you're going to be playing against masters rated players in the tournament. Everybody in your bracket is going to at one point been a master rated player. And so the competition is going to go up. So if you're new, definitely slow play. You know, learn how to play the game and stay in the lower tours and work on your clubs until you get your clubs to a usable level. 
it doesn't take very long if you're playing on a regular basis. My 99 account has my low level account has pretty high level T4 clubs and it's got most of them just from playing in tournaments. I haven't played a lot of one on one. Maybe just a couple hundred games in one on one and the rest of my games are all been just what I played in tournaments. All right, that was a little bit. Hey, we've got some time on our hands here. So everybody's at home. We got the coronavirus growing around the world. Everybody's at home. Um, we can't play these holes in rookie, but you can at least prep yourself up. So if you haven't used the win ring method yet, and I know that there's people out there that watch my channel that don't use the win ring method, and we've got this great tool at our disposal. And hopefully if you watch the channel, your whole goal is to try and become a top 10 player so that you can win a banner. I want every single one of my viewers to have a banner. I mean, if you're listening to the channel, I have a lot of people that listen to the channel that didn't have banners and have banners now. And the whole goal is to try and get everybody on the channel a banner to teach you how to play at that level. And so if you don't have your win ring numbers written down, write them down for your clubs. It's pretty simple. And I've got videos in that playlist that will walk you through exactly how to uh, how to do it. There's some if my little puppy sitting here. He's like, what are you doing, dad? What are you doing, man? I went down. You went down? You want to run around and get into stuff? So if you're, uh, where is the game? Where is the game? I guess it's not going to let me do that. All right. So that's a little bit. Hey, we got some time. Like I said, we got some time on our hands. So work on your stuff so that when the tournament comes, we can get right at it because we didn't get to practice these holes this week. So that means on day one, we may have to spend day one, Monday and Tuesday practicing. And Wednesday may be a qualification day and there's always risks when you qualify on Wednesday. So if you qualify on Wednesday, number one, if you make any mistakes on Wednesday, you could not make it. And number two, there's a lot of people out there that did practice on Monday and Tuesday and then Wednesday rolls around. So the competition could be really tight on Wednesday. Sometimes Wednesday is a hard day to, to qualify on the scores. You have to have better scores. So we definitely want to make, we want to maximize what we do on Monday. So the more information that you have ready so that when Monday comes along, you don't have to think about that. The more successful you'll be on those holes. All right. Just a uh, little, just a little video on it. I got two minutes and eight. I wanted to shoot a 30 minute video. Hey, I've got one of my viewers on here, Sonic. What's up, Sonic? Where you at? Let's go to uh, YouTube. It was YouTube. Let's go to Sonic Lover. Hey. So Sonic Lover put on here, um, have I thought about live streaming before? I want to live stream. I'm going to live stream as soon as I get to a thousand viewers. Now I know that you can live stream if you have one viewer. You can live stream if you set up on your, your laptop or your main desktop computer and you set it all up and you set up a, a little studio, you can live stream. But I want to live stream on mobile devices because I'm out and about. I'm, I'm, I'm not always at home when I want to stream. Or I may want to be out in my garage or I want to be outside or I want to do stuff. So I want to be able to mobile stream and do that. And my, my goal set all along since the channel got on was that I wanted to get 1,000 viewers. And when I got to 1,000 viewers, I would, I would start live streaming. So my goal is, is that because then your YouTube's YouTube won't let you live stream if you're on mobile devices, unless you have a thousand subscribers. And so the channel is at like 632 or 630, right in that neighborhood, 635. Damn, that's amazing guys. That is absolutely amazing to have that many con uh, subscribers. But when I get to a thousand, I'm going to, I'm going to start mobile streaming and I'll do, I'll do the deal. I'll do whatever it takes to, to, to get the ball process because I'll probably have to buy some new equipment. I'll probably have to buy a new lap or a desk, not a desktop or a laptop, but a new tablet. And I'll have to do this, do the thing. So if you're out there, I have, I promote the channel. I'm not a big, you know, like my whole deal is to try and help you guys out. So I don't like self promote the channel a lot. I'm not one of those channels. Like every video I'm like, please hit subscribe down at the bottom. I just, I assume that that's like a, a, a given like if you like the content you would subscribe down at the bottom but i have 635 viewers and you guys have access to stuff and so if you want me to start live streaming if you guys want to help me get to a thousand viewers you know you've got feeds on your facebook and other methods of social media to get the word out you could uh, spread the word for me i get 635 people spreading the word it's a lot better than me spreading the word 
that would uh, help me get to my thousand and then I could start live streaming. So that's where we're at, Sonic. Thanks for the question. And Sonic Lover is a super active. He also um, watches content from Hammer and Hank and Dale Appleby. And, and, and I'm not even sure. Sonic's all over the place. It seems like every time I go to a live stream, Sonic's in there. So Sonic's a super active player. Great fan for the channel. And, um, and that's where we're at as far as live streaming. So if anybody wants to help me out help me promote i will i would appreciate it <laughs> all right that was a little bit before the tournament coming up to the weekend so everybody will have an opportunity if you're not already at home to uh, work on your stuff but get your club numbers that way on monday when we start practicing we'll have you guys will have some notes and it'll help speed the process up go out and find an app that will allow you to record your gameplay i use the recorder but there's a lot of different apps that are out there that you can use on your mobile device that will allow you to um, record your own gameplay. And it's super important that you record your own gameplay. Even if you record it and then go, okay, it was no big deal. I didn't get any of the holes I'm looking for. And then you just erase it. Always have a copy of it because if you're on one of those tournament holes or you're doing that max overpower hook or you're doing that shot that's out there that you've been practicing and you hit it. Okay, think right now of that shot that like a, some spectacular shot that you hit. And you have no freaking clue what, what you did because you can go back and watch the game replay, which is fun, but you can't pause it and you can't do all that stuff. Or you could pull up your DU recorder or whatever program you're using and you could go back there and analyze that and go, what the hell just went wrong? Why did I miss that shot? I hit it perfect and I was right at the cup. I mean, it really comes in handy for your mistakes. It's like the whole Yoda and the force thing. You learn more from your mistakes than you do from your successes. So you can go out there and go, hey, I hit it in perfect. I did the right wind adjustment. I hit in there perfect. What the hell just went wrong? And so you can go back and analyze it and you can go, well, hell, I made a, <laughs> I was supposed to go two and a half rings and I went one ring or one and a half rings, or I made a mid adjustment and I should have made a max adjustment, or I did everything perfect and it's off the cup. That tells me that there might be an elevation change. That's why, like when I say during the week, I work towards like towards the weekend round, I get better and better towards the weekend round on those holes because I can go back and analyze what I did right and what I did wrong. And so I can look at my shot. Like sometimes you guys will watch a shot. You guys have a benefit that I don't have. So you guys can really critique me and smack me up beside the head is because you guys can go back and watch a video that I did where I was like, what the hell just happened? And you can rewind it immediately and go back there and you can do the math. Okay, hey, dude, you said it was 2.1 per ring and that would have been 3.6 rings and you moved it 2.6 rings and you made a mistake. Or you did everything perfect and it still missed. What the hell's the deal? That tells me there's an elevation change. That's how I can figure out when I need to make a change and that's why my notes get better as the week goes on. I try not to use the stuff that's in the community. I try and figure out in my game what's going on and I use the video to help me. So it'll really help you if you record your gameplay so that you can go back and analyze yourself to figure out what went wrong and what went right. All right. That was just a little 30 or so minute video. Um, hopefully everybody's having a good time. Hopefully everybody's being safe. You know, stay at home as much as you can. Let's We're doing the self-isolation thing and trying to stay home as much as we can. I'm the only one that leaves my house and I clean my garage and I clean myself when I come in and change the thing. But trying to stop the spread and I'm um, trying to uh, be responsible citizens. And in the meantime, we have plenty of time to play golf clash. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching.